What's up guys? Okay, we are gonna be cleaning some guns today. Um, and I figure we'll take you guys along on the process and just let you know what my process for cleaning guns is and uh, go from there. So first things first, no ammunition, absolutely no ammunition anywhere near the table here. So there's no ammunition in this room. Uh, I've double checked that and made sure that there is no ammunition in my range bag, which I try to not keep any ammunition in my range bag anyway. Um, but no ammunition in any of these guns. All of these magazines have been cleared out. No ammunition anywhere. Okay. No ammunition. No ammunition. Super, super important, okay? When you're dealing with firearms, when you're gonna be manipulating them indoors, you gotta make sure you have no ammo. Um, second, all of these guns have been safety checked. They have no, they are not loaded at all. They're completely unloaded. Um, all of the actions are locked back when we're not operating them. If they're not taken down, then the actions are gonna be locked back just so that we don't have to worry about anything. So we don't have to wonder. So that's step one and two because safety is always third. So now on to uh, some of the actual cleaning stuff that we are gonna need. So we have all of the magazines. We went out shooting yesterday in the desert. Uh, if you didn't watch the vlog, link up here. Um, this, uh, this is all the magazines that I used in the Canik. This is the only magazine I used in this uh, XDM, and this is the only magazine that Jen used in the Ruger SR9. But we were shooting out in the desert, really dusty, sandy, all that stuff, so all the magazines will get cleaned as well. So we have everything on the cleaning on the table here um, that we are going to clean. And then as far as the uh, actual cleaning kit that we're gonna use, we're gonna use the uh, Remington Squeegee kit. I love this kit, okay? This thing is fantastic. No, I am not sponsored in any way by Remington. I wouldn't mind, but uh, this is just the fav my favorite kit because you don't have to use any wads um, or swabs, no, no cloth swabs or anything like that for cleaning out your barrel. After you do your scrubbing with your bore cleaner, you run one of these squeegees through uh, and they are just plastic. They uh, have all these little fins on them. They collect all of the residue from the bore cleaner and any gunk or carbon buildup that you might have. And they run and they, they pull it out the end. And then you just use terry cloth. You wipe these things off. You can run these under the sink and get them cleaned up. I like that because Man, I hate the disposable swabs, they just suck. The washable ones, you have to put them in one of these little washi bag things and then they just get all over the place. Um, next thing is we got some frog lube, some frog oil. I love this stuff, especially for my AR, but I end up um, using it uh, to lube up all of, the, um, all of the action points on my handguns as well. And then some terry cloth rags. So that's stuff, stuff that we've got. All right, so we're gonna get the handguns out of the way here. And we are going to start with cleaning the AR. Um, this is my Smith & Wesson MP15. I love this thing. It has a Midwest Industries uh, M-Lock foregrip. This thing is Fantastic. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so first thing that we are going to do here uh, is start taking it down. First things first, action needs to be closed, and then there are two punch out pins. If you don't know how to take down the AR, then you should probably learn how to do that before you try to clean the AR. Um, I'm going to remove both pins so that. I can completely remove the lower from the upper. This is as taken down as I'm gonna do the, uh, the lower for cleaning up, but there is more that I need to do for this upper. So I'm gonna remove the buffer tube and the, uh, and the charging handle. And I'm gonna pull off my scope. This just has a little clip over on it. So, boom. That's as taken down as this rifle is going to get for cleaning. 
So next things next is I like to go over and just while it's dry, before I put any kind of things on here and wipe down and brush out any dust. Uh, especially since yesterday we went shooting out in the desert where there's sand and all that stuff, it just builds up in here. Um, and so if you start wiping everything down with a ram oil or a bore cleaner or something like that, then all of this stuff turns into a gritty, muddy mess and can get really frustrating. Let's get on that one. We'll do the same on here. T-shirts, old T-shirts work really well. Yep, yeah, I like cotton. Cotton, cotton works well. Now I get to work on internals. So you kind of get a rhythm for what you like to do, what order you want this process to happen in. Um, me personally, I like working the upper and then the lower. Um, so that I can work the upper, put it all back together, set it aside, put, do the lower, and then just slap them together, and then I'm done. So, to clean this upper, what I need to do is, um, is get my carbon picks. So I have two carbon picks, both of them come with this little Remington kit, which is nice. So it has a flat carbon scraper, and a uh, more fine carbon pick and so I'm going to start with the carbon scraper put it on my little cleaning rod here and I just run the scraper over it mostly to loosen it all up because all of this stuff has been lubed up so it's not it, the carbon isn't particularly stuck down on any of this stuff but I still run the scraper before I run any brushes because it's it's just a lot easier to work that way than it is to uh, try and brush everything down and then have to go in and scrape and then end up rebrushing afterwards. See? Economy of effort. Try and do everything once. Okay. By the way, Jen's not here because she's trying to learn how to clean guns. She's been cleaning guns her whole life. She's here because she has a gun to clean. It just so happens she doesn't have a rifle to clean. And right now, my rifle's taking up the entire table. So, mm -hmm. it's not, she's not trying to learn. Just observing. It's she pretty knows, fun. She knows what she's doing. Funny because I love the smell of the stuff. Yeah. I absolutely love. Frog lube is, smells great. It's like the natural gun oil. Mm -hmm. Plus a little wintergreen in it. Getting scraped out here, just making sure we're not gonna have to do work twice. Where I really wanna make sure that I'm scraping carbon off is any surface that matches up with any other surface, um, where like that carbon buildup will cause a blockage in, or, or a jam. Um, so any of those types of spaces where metal on metal contact happens, that needs to be like really really well cleaned otherwise you don't you don't end up fulfilling the purpose of cleaning the gun always blown away some people never clean like ever and then they're wondering why jams are happening or any little thing it's like clean your stuff take care of it carbon builds up on everything and and you get enough carbon and carbon builds on itself you get enough carbon in there and it's gonna bind up. So, and then you're looking at like a possible like catastrophic failure of the gun. If you're, um, you know, if you get a round jammed in the barrel and then another round seats and you ignite that one, like you're talking about a barrel explosion. Okay, so now we are going to clean the bore out. Um, and so what that looks like is, uh, grabbing a universal bore brush um, and making sure that it's the right size. In this kit, it comes with two bore brushes um, and you want to make sure that you're using the smaller one with like an AR because this is essentially the same barrel, almost. It's a tiny bit bigger than like a 22, so it's a really small barrel. One end of the cable hooks onto the bore brush, the other end of the cable hooks onto the uh, the, what is this, cleaning rod, the yeah. pistol cleaning rod. Um, and then I'm going to feed the cleaning rod down through the barrel. 
Now this cable is coated so it's not going to scratch anything up as well as the cleaning rod. They're both coated so that you don't have to worry about scratching the interior of your, uh, of your barrel. And right now I'm not running it through with any kind of cleaning agent. Um, what I'm doing is just running it through dry, um, hoping that the lubrication that I used last time I cleaned the gun uh, is still in there a little bit and in there enough that it can um, drag out some of the carbon. Kind of like doing a dry rub on everything before using a, uh, uh, a gun cleaner on the outside. So we feed it through. I'm going to do three times this way. Just hoping that every time it moves stuff a little bit further down. Now we have run it through a few times and even just touching it on my hand, there's a bunch of carbon build up on here. And so we are gonna get, can you pass me one of those terry cloths? Uh, so we're gonna use a washcloth here and I'm just gonna rub the uh, brush on it. Um, trying to just get some of the built up carbon that's on the brush off. Okay, so now I'm gonna introduce some bore cleaner. I'm gonna apply the bore cleaner straight onto the brush and then feed it in um, into the barrel. So I'm gonna put three stripes of this guy on the bore brush, and then I'm gonna feed it through, trying not to hit it on all the edges in the uh, chamber here, just to get as much of it into the, into the barrel as possible. And we'll feed that straight in. Okay. Now we will do it again, adding a little bit more bore cleaner in. So again, three stripes of bore cleaner onto the bore brush. Feed that through. Now we should have a decent amount of bore cleaner in there. We'll run this brush a few more times, and then um, and then we'll run the squeegee through, and we'll check it, make sure that um, that afterwards we get a clean squeegee. Run this through three-ish more times. One thing to be careful of, uh, if you're using a push rod or if you're using one of these cable systems, check this connection um, on the between the rod and the and the cable or the um, the handle and your rod all the time because as this brush goes through the uh, the barrel, it's going to be rotating through. So the brush is in a spiral and the barrel has rifling spirals in it. So both of those are going to cause this brush to rotate as it goes through and it'll unscrew off the end of this thing if you're not keeping an eye on it. It's not really going to cause a problem but it's annoying and it slows you down when you're working. Alright, so look at all that gunk that's coming off of the bore brush right there. Um, so we'll wipe this off, we'll send it down again And again. And again. And again. And again. A lot of repetition in this. Um, when you have a little tube that runs the whole length of the gun, like this, it takes a little bit of working to get it out and get everything out of there. So it's kind of just judging it based on how much dirt's coming out. Not dirt, but gunk is coming out and uh, how wet or dry your bore brush is uh, as far as like if it'd be a good idea to introduce more bore cleaner or not. And honestly, like I always kind of err on the side of adding more to it than not. Because more bore cleaner is just gonna help all that stuff loosen up. As long as you clean it all out afterwards and you, you make sure that you're running, uh, running your squeegee through until it's coming out dry, then there's no problem adding more bore cleaner in. So we've, we've run it through until the bore brush is relatively clean. 
So then the next deal is going to be getting the appropriate size uh, squeegee. Okay, so now we're ready to run the squeegee through the first time. So we will run this dude through, got the right size squeegee on there. Push it on through. Yeah. Drag her the length. Okay, now check this out. Okay, so I see all that crap there that just built up. So this all just got pulled out on the first pull through on the uh, squeegee. Some of it even hit the uh, gun on the table. Garbage. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to wipe it off. Run it again. Nice. Came out pretty clean that time around. We'll run it one more just to make sure. Some people, the, the reason that some people don't like the squeegee is because when the bore is clean and uh, dry, it's pretty difficult to pull the squeegee through. Uh, so just remember that it's not a problem. It's nothing abnormal. It's just difficult because it doesn't have anything to lubricate it Next things next is going to be to introduce some of the um, The frog lube down the chamber we are going to do frog lube pull it through twice um, and then run the squeegee through once we don't want the bore to be wet when we're done. We don't want there to be like just a, a huge amount of oil in there. Um, but running that through and then running the squeegee through, it'll leave uh, just enough. So same concept as the uh, bore cleaner. We are gonna do a couple of lines on the bore brush and then we're gonna send it in. I don't really care if it gets all over in the chamber because I'm just about to clean there anyway. So we'll pull that guy through. We'll send it one more time with one more load of the frog lube. Perfect. So now we'll run the squeegee through one time and it'll leave behind enough frog oil um, that our bore will be sufficiently oiled until the next time we use it. So I'll pull this guy through here. Perfect, okay. All right, so you can see what that looks like now. Um, it is relatively translucent. You gotta remember the frog lube is green, and so it's not completely clear or translucent uh, in and of itself anyway. Um, so you don't wanna forget that, otherwise you're gonna be cleaning your gun forever and wondering why it's not coming back out clear. Oakley dokley. So next step here is to introduce some uh, cleaner into the receiver here and then scrub a dab dab and making sure to really uh, get cleaned up the lock between the bolt and the uh, and the, the bore here. Get in all the little hard to reach places. Um, you can use your push rod inside of a washcloth like this and, uh, and you make yourself a little bit of a, uh, a scrubber in that way. So now I can get in there. Look at that. Get in there and get all that crap out. That is disgusting. So I'm going to get some rim oil to get inside the receiver here. Get this all oiled up a little bit with, with the rim oil and then also the rim oil helps to get cleaned up. So I wipe it down, wipe it down with the frog lube uh, last just because that's the one that I want to have sitting on there all the time. But this I use as a little bit of a cleaner. Again, like Kai said, any places like this that has direct contact, like in a slide, you gotta make sure it's super clean. 
If not, bad news bears. Bad news bears, you heard it here first, people. Um, so important thing is just hitting everything from all directions, all angles. Uh, just trying to, you know, there's a lot of different configurations and angles and stuff like that on these uh, on these guns. So hitting it from every angle really helps out because the the, the carbon uh, gets blown into all of the little crevices by the pressure that's cr that's created by the uh, by the explosion of the gunpowder, and um, so it's not it's not caused by rubbing on anything. Um, if anything, the rubbing on stuff helps the carbon to go away. It's preferable to clean after every time that you take your gun out. If you are somebody who shoots all the time, then you might want to try and go with a routine where you clean your gun every two weeks uh, or every month, depending on how often you shoot. I do not clean my guns after every time that I shoot. But I clean my nope. guns. But I clean my guns on a regular basis. I try and go with a round count. Um, so I try and sh clean every gun after I've fired like 750 to 1,000 rounds through it. Uh, which for me doesn't take that long. I shoot a lot every time I go out. When I go out shooting, I, I make a point to put a lot of rounds through the guns because. I, I do a lot of practicing and stuff like that. So when I take out my handguns, I typically go through somewhere in the neighborhood of 400 rounds. Um, and so I'm gonna be cleaning my handguns every other time I take them out. So I just try and pay attention and, and clean it as, as that comes up. So now we are done with the uh, upper. Uh, this is my favorite part, doing a little bit of frog lubing on, the, uh, on these pieces. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to put dollops of frog lube on uh, any of the parts where there is uh, major contact and friction. Sweet! Okay, so upper receiver, done. Lower receiver, a lot easier to clean because uh, it's not something that has direct contact with the, uh, with the explosion of the ammunition. So again, we will just dry wipe down everything here. There's really just a little bit of clean that needs to happen on this lower receiver. Frog lube down inside on the, uh, on the hammer spring. And then I'm going to release the hammer a few times. And this just works in that frog lube on the, on the hammer spring. Okay, and then I'm gonna leave the hammer forward so that I can access underneath the hammer. Get the sear all cleaned up. They all look pretty good. I haven't fired that many rounds through this gun between the last time that I cleaned it and now. Give some of these exterior pieces a little bit of a wipe down. So the, the frog lube is good to wipe down the outside of the metal pieces the metal pieces on your gun. It does put a little bit of a protective coating on the metal. Uh, you just don't want to leave it wet. So uh, wipe it on, wipe it off. Get yourself all cleaned up. There we go. Okay, so now it's time to put this gun back together, put the final lube in there, and then we're done. So now we get to lube up the, uh, the receiver here. So we're going to lock the bolt rear and then we are going to add some lube on the locking joint here and we're going to run the action. Lock that rear, make sure that it's still oiled up good, which it is. Put that back forward again, pop the receiver open one more time. Keeping the front, uh, keeping the front one on. Set the gun up here like so. Set some lube down on the bolt. So a few key points is the back of the bolt. Uh, this front slide section of the bolt, and then uh, where the hammer gets pushed back down 
uh, which is right up in here. Um, that part of the metal, when it slides back, it resets the hammer. So we will close this guy back up and we'll run our action. Pop it back open again. And we'll make sure we have some lube here on the on the hammer because that means that we've lubed up the uh, the bolt carrier correctly. And we'll make sure that there's still sufficient lube inside there. Close it up. Do a final little wipe down. Make sure that everywhere that lube might be pouring out doesn't stay wet. And we are done. So I'll reset my scope on here. There we go. AR-15 has been cleaned. Okay, so I got my Canik TP9SFX with five magazines that I shot through it. She has Ruger SR9C with the one magazine that she has used in that. Okay, so first step is taking these things apart. Okay, so to take down the Canik uh, TP9SFX, if you don't know, it's similar to the Glocks, which means that we're going to pull back a little bit on the slide. We're going to pull down on both sides of the release here and then slide her forward and she comes off. Simple. Okay. Then we're going to pop the uh, recoil spring out. There we go. So that is as taken down as we are going to get this gun here. Oh. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. Look at that. That boy, boy is dirt. Hey. Oh, man. <laughs> That's why it jammed a few times yesterday. So, yeah, first steps using the carbon scraper and the carbon pick to get the areas of high buildup. Now that we've already shown you most of these steps on the rifle and we're just taking it down to the smaller size, we will speed through all of these. One of the key areas on the handgun to make sure that you're scraping out really well is the feed ramp, which is this polished little ramp here um, for the ammunition to be able to slide up. So you want to use your carbon scraper on that for sure. Now again, I like to compartmentalize a little bit. And uh, so I'm going to set the receiver which is the lower area, oh, I'm going to set the lower side and I'm going to focus on the upper. So I'm going to get the barrel all cleaned out really well, get the upper receiver all set, cleaned out and this recoil spring and then I'll get this all set back in um, and at that time I will clean the lower. <laughs> Mechanic is getting there. Just got the upper receiver all cleared out, so now I will reset my barrel, reset my recoil spring. So upper of the canic is done. Now for the lower of the canic. Dry brush. I've already picked it, but dry brush in. Unlike the AR, the AR the lower receiver gets very minimally dirty. Um, the lower receiver on a handgun gets pretty gummed up. Uh, handgun rounds are typically more dirty, more uh, carbon residue buildup and stuff like that on a handgun. I'm going to put a little bit of lube down in the uh, in the trigger springs. All right, so got that all lubed up. Now we will reset that gun together and we will lube up some of the 
high friction contact points on this gun here one of which is right at the front of the lock lube on it we run the action we wipe it the excess away run the action wipe the excess okay and one more high friction contact point at the back of the lock on the bottom There you go, that is the Canik TP9 SFX all cleaned up, all lubed up, and ready to go for the next round. Mm -hmm. So, when I'm doing drills out in the desert and I'm dropping my magazines out, I get a ton of dirt in these magazines. That's what I'm mostly cleaning off and then uh, I'm just going to make sure that the springs are wiped down and all that stuff. So really it's not about lubing these things up. It's just about making sure that they are um, clean enough to feed. You, you want to be clean, feeding clean ammunition into your gun so that you don't have malfunctions in that way. And then you also want to make sure that your magazines won't bind up because um, that would put you in a dampered spot if you were like in a competition or, or a gunfight where you're needing to make sure that, um, that you're not gonna have any malfunctions. Some people neglect the magazines. I say it takes about six and a half seconds to take them apart and takes about a minute to wipe them down. What's spending another four or five minutes on magazines after you've already spent 20 to 30 on cleaning a gun, you know? So you might as well get it done. So I'm just wiping down this mag spring here. Looking pretty good. And we'll get it put back together. The spring set back in. Get the base plate back on. And there's one down. That's it. Easy peasy. Look at that. Nothing like a little before and after. <laughs> oh yeah. It's even shiny. The way it's supposed to look. Sweet! We are complete. Finished up cleaning all the guns out. Um, so, yeah, basically, things to remember is just to always be um, super vigilant about getting all the little nooks and crannies to make sure you go in the steps of uh, to dry brush everything and then you use a carbon scraper. Then go through with some cleaner, wipe everything down, and then use some sort of like a lube or oil. It's really important that you go in those steps and that you, it's easiest if you go one piece at a time. Do the barrel first and then the upper receiver and then the lower receiver uh, or do it the other way around. So yeah, that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys found this to be useful. If you did, then uh, make sure you hit that like button. Also, the subscribe link is right up above us. Also, check out some of our other videos. Take care of yourselves, everybody. Make it a great day. I'm throwing in the towel. Peace out. That was tiring. <laughs> Clean your guns. Ready to go shooting.